Hello Year 11 uh, and welcome back again to our next physics lesson. Um, this is the third of our lesson all about waves. If you haven't done lesson one or lesson two, it's not too late to go and catch up with that. So um, I'd like to start our lesson here um, by getting my flip chart up. Here we go. And this lesson is called the electromagnetic spectrum. So we're going to learn about a different sort of wave today called an electromagnetic wave. Your first job uh, in the Google Classrooms job assignment, I've set you there. I've put a link to a YouTube video all about electromagnetic waves. So what I'd like you to do now is pause this video and go and watch the YouTube video all about the different electromagnetic waves. Now, while you're doing that, your job is to write down the names of all the different types of electromagnetic waves that get mentioned. You should be able to spot seven different sorts of electromagnetic wave in the video. So write those down in your book. You can pause the video now and I'll go through the answers to that. So pause the video now. And welcome back. If you watch the video all the way through, you will have noticed that the seven different sorts of electromagnetic waves that got mentioned are radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays. So these are the seven different sorts of electromagnetic waves. But what are electromagnetic waves? Well, We've been learning uh, about sound waves and water waves as good examples of longitudinal and transverse waves. So the first thing to say about electromagnetic waves is electromagnetic waves are transverse waves, just like water. Uh, electromagnetic waves transfer energy just like all waves do. One of the special things about electromagnetic waves is they don't need particles to travel from place to place. A water wave needs water particles to travel across the pond. A sound wave needs air particles to travel through the air. But electromagnetic waves can travel through places where there aren't any particles. They can travel through a vacuum like space, for example. And the other special feature that all electromagnetic waves have is that they all travel at the speed of light. That's 300 million meters every second. So there are a special group of waves which have these special features. So let's have a look at what the differences between them and water waves are. For example, electromagnetic waves can travel through a vacuum. But sound waves uh, need particles, I'm sorry, water waves need particles to travel. Um, electromagnetic waves and water waves are both transverse waves. Not all electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, but water waves can travel at all different speeds. Just like every other sort of wave, electromagnetic waves and water waves are caused by vibrations and they transfer energy. They have peaks and troughs, just like every transverse wave. And because they're a transverse wave, that means that this fact is true about them. The vibrations that make the wave are perpendicular to the direction of the energy transfer. So we've got a nice summary there of the things that are only true about electromagnetic waves, the things that are only true about water waves, and all the things they have in common. Now, for your next job, you're going to be opening up the worksheet in your assignment, which is called Comparing EM and Water Waves. And you can see that the first page of it actually has a little summary of the facts we've just been talking about there. Now, you're going to use these facts to fill in the next page on the worksheet. You've got two sections, one where it's going to ask you to write some things about the differences between electromagnetic and water waves, and one where it's going to ask you to write some things that are similar between electromagnetic 
and water waves. So let's have a look how we can fill in this worksheet. For the first section where it says differences between electromagnetic and water waves. Well, let's have a look. Things which are different between them. I can see here that electromagnetic waves, they can travel through a vacuum, but water waves need particles to travel. So let's follow the instruction here. Give a fact about electromagnetic waves. Uh, electromagnetic waves uh, can travel through a vacuum. So electromagnetic waves uh, can travel through a vacuum. Okay. But it says to use a connective. I need to join this fact to a fact about water waves. Now, the fact about water waves is going to be a difference. So I'm going to use a good connective for a difference here. Electromagnetic waves can travel through a vacuum, whereas, let's have a look what my fact tells me. Let's have a look. Water waves need particles to travel, whereas, water waves need particles to travel. OK, so you can type in your differences between electromagnetic and water waves. Remember to use a connective in between. So if I read that sentence back, it would say electromagnetic waves can travel through a vacuum whereas water waves need particles to travel. So I've written a good comparing sentence. Similarities between electromagnetic and water waves. Let's have a look. What do they have in common? So I can go back to my first sheet of the worksheet here, and I can look at all the things they have in common. For example, both electromagnetic waves and water waves transfer energy. So both electromagnetic waves and water waves transfer energy. And I could go back and fill in all the different facts that electromagnetic and water waves have in common. So that's how you can fill in the first section of the worksheet. So I'd like you to go to the worksheet uh, on your assignment and fill that section in. Now you can pause the video while you're doing that. So whilst you're doing the work on that worksheet, pause the video. and We'll do our final task once you've finished that. Pause the video now. Welcome back. Uh, so you've done that first task on your worksheet. We've got one more job to do on that. Uh, and to do that, you just need to have a quick think about all the different waves, the electromagnetic waves, which we discovered in the video at the start. Now, all those electromagnetic waves come from atoms. Sometimes they come from electrons uh, as they drop back towards the nucleus and they give off these waves. Sometimes even the nucleus gives off these waves. They can give off these special gamma rays. So when we think about all these different waves, uh, the only ones we can see with our eyes are the visible light rays. Visible light is an electromagnetic wave. And all the different colors of light are just the different wavelengths of visible light. For example, red light has the longest wavelength. But violet light has the shortest wavelength. So different colors of light have those different wavelengths. They're just different lengths of electromagnetic waves. Now, if the waves were shorter than violet light, our eyes couldn't see them. Our eyes can only see those different waves. If the waves are shorter than the violet light, our eyes can't see them. And you would actually call that ultraviolet light. It's light which has a shorter wavelength than violet and our eyes can't see it. Uh, if the wavelength is longer than red light, our eyes can't see them. We would call that infrared light. Now, the waves are still there. It's just that our eyes can't see them. So there's a whole bunch of waves, electromagnetic waves, that our eyes can't see. And when we put them in order, uh, we make this list of the different types of electromagnetic waves called the electromagnetic spectrum. Now you need to learn all seven of the different waves and you need to learn them in order from the longest waves, which are radio waves, all the way up to the shortest waves, which are gamma rays. So to help us learn that list of seven from radio waves, 
which could be 10 to the 3, a thousand meters long, all the way down to the shortest one, the gamma rays, which could be 10 to the minus 14 meters. So that's 0.14 zeros and then a one meters. It's really small. We need to learn that order. Radio waves, micro rays, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays, gamma rays. So to learn them in order, from long wavelength down to short wavelength, or you could say from low frequency up to higher frequency, or from low energy up to higher energy, we must learn them in this order. And to do that, we need to come up with what we call a mnemonic, a way of remembering those words in order. So radio wave, microwave, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays, gamma rays. Those seven words in order, I've made up a little mnemonic here, a phrase which helps me remember them from longest wavelength radio waves all the way down to shortest wavelength gamma rays. R M I V U X G. Ripped men in violet underpants are extremely gorgeous. That's my mnemonic for remembering the seven different electromagnetic waves in order from longest to shortest. And you'll actually see that uh, on the last page of your worksheet. When we look at the last page of your worksheet, I've got the waves listed with my mnemonic, ripped men in violet underpants, extremely gorgeous. To remember radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays. Your last job is to try and make up your own mnemonic. A little saying you can come up with, seven words, R-M-I-V-U-X-G, to help you remember the order of the waves from longest to shortest. And I need you to type your mnemonic uh, into the last boxes on the worksheet there. Once you've finished that, that's all your work done for today. But please make sure you submit that work to me on Google Classrooms so I can see you've finished it. So submit uh, your worksheet and I look forward to seeing that. Please drop me a message if you've got any questions. And I'm just going to stop recording now uh, so you guys can get on with the video. Really good luck with that work, guys. Please drop me a message uh, if you've got any questions.